Hey, greetings my fellow Royals. Just wanted to send out a quick Thanksgiving message for you. Uh, just to say thank you for all you guys have done, um, the contributions you've made into my own heart. Um, as we've gathered together, you've given me the opportunity to impart what the Lord has put in my heart over the years. Uh, you've allowed me to share those people who have touched my life in hopes that they would impart uh, something uh, into your hearts that they've imparted into mine. Um, I wanted to share quickly a little tip that I think you might find really helpful uh, amongst the hustle and bustle that we'll be doing both today and tomorrow, as well as the festivities with loved ones. Um, obviously we have sometimes challenges, controversial issues. Um, we have combative uh, individuals. Sometimes our personalities don't necessarily mesh very well, um, and so it can also be a stressful time. And so. Uh, I wanted to give you two tips. First, um, just like uh, you know, you may not appreciate a Picasso painting, or you may not like a Picasso or a Rembrandt or whatever, but when you look at the canvas, you can certainly appreciate what the artist um, has gone through in his life to get to that point. Um, all of the feelings and emotions and talent and everything that went into that paintbrush when it touched the canvas. And so you can appreciate the painting. You may not like it, but you can certainly appreciate it. And so I want to encourage you, if you do have uh, relatives that you're going to be meeting or people that you're going to be gathering together with that maybe uh, it's difficult, try to step back from the emotional part of it and just appreciate them as a human being, as one of God's uh, children. Um, despite the challenges they have, you know, they've lived a life that brought them to this point. And this period, um, the paintbrush of life has touched their canvas for better or for worse. And you can certainly appreciate them. You may not like them or you may not really mesh with them, but you certainly can um, look and admire what God has done to bring them to this point in their life, as well as to really understand that they're here because of the choices they've made as well. Secondly, uh, one of the great ways that I use to really um, be thankful is, you know, obviously set aside some time, fed 5, 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes away from everyone or before the festivities start. And um, I like to think about not just what I'm grateful for in my life, but everything that went into um, that point in time to allow me to sit there and appreciate that moment. So, you know, for example, when you look at the food on the table, right, and all that God's given us on the table or even in our lifetime at that point, it's not just that food. It's everything that went into bringing that food there. So when you think of the pumpkin pie, right, obviously the seeds had to be planted or the ground had to be toiled or, or you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, to uh, yeah, toiled or or or, or uh, <laughs> carved. I forgot the word. And then the seed was planted, and then there was 90 days of watering and cultivation, and and uh, then they had to go through and pick the pumpkins. They then had to, uh, you know, clean the pumpkin, uh, deskin the pumpkin, mash the pumpkin, just to get that pumpkin mash to the store, right? And then you think about, wow, what went into the tractor that? Um, you know, was able to do all of that, right? The metal that was made, how that metal was ored from the ground and fired in a furnace and how that furnace was created. And I mean, if you think about it from the beginning of time until where we are now, it's just uh, almost unfathomable. And it's not just the, the, the metal and the tractor, it's, you know, all the labor, right? The, the, um, the manufacturing process that made that pumpkin into mush that stuck it in a can and then the trucks that transported it to the stores and all that went into making that truck all that went into making the tires of the truck, all that went into making the parts of the truck, and then the actual pavement that the truck rode on, right? I mean, I think that sometimes when I'm on a layover and I'm driving in some of these cities and those roads that were laid, I can't help but my mind think about the people who suffered that laid those roads, right? Maybe someone was going through a divorce or someone had a sick child or loved one in the hospital or, you know, disease that couldn't be cured and they were toiling and suffering and yet here they were making the road that later, years later, I would have the opportunity to drive on. And so when you think of it from that perspective, it's just absolutely amazing. You can't help but be grateful for the just the magnificent generosity of our loving uh, Yahweh creator who gave us this opportunity to sit at this point in time. And um, it's just natural for us then to turn our hearts and say, God, what do you desire of me? You've given me so much. How can I repay you? What can I do? What would you like me to do for you? Um, and then that begins to help us kind of put our minds towards this next year because it, right now in this period, as things start to calm down and we move into the holiday season, 
um, our minds begin to think about um, what are we going to plan on 2019. And so this is a great opportunity to, in that reflection, be so grateful and then ask the Lord, what would he desire of you this next year? What is he asking of you? You know, how can we make our relationship better with him? You know, for me, I know um, I recently am started to assemble a schedule. Um, I have what they call, nine, you know, these sacred sprints. And so I'm actually planning out how can I get deeper with God? How can I draw closer, right? I mean, be more disciplined with my study habits in the morning when I wake up, have my sacred time where uh, on Mondays, you know, maybe I'll read. On Tuesdays, maybe I'll meditate. On Wednesdays, you know, I'll focus on prayer, right? Actually structure it and put it in the calendar so that I'm more disciplined with my quiet time with the Lord because a lot of times I'll sit there and I'll start to pray and I'll either doze off and fall asleep because I woke up at five o'clock in the morning after being, you know, up 40 hours from Sao Paulo and uh, I just don't feel that uh, as effective as I'd like it to be. And so I've been asking the Lord, how can I make my time with you more effective, more productive, more, um, uh, you know, so that we have a better relationship? And so um, those are just some thoughts. I want to bless you and just say have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, may you experience an overflowing of the Lord's goodness and love and presence in your gatherings. May the Holy Spirit just comfort you in this time and this season and just gird you up in a tremendous amount of love and, and uh, peace. And uh, may you, um, like I said, uh, draw your hearts closer to our King and uh, seek his face for 2019. So I love you. God bless. I'm looking forward to our next gathering. Um, the Lord has been orchestrating some situations where we're going to have some uh, wonderful guests to join us in our uh, gatherings at the midpoint of each month. And so I'm excited to be able to bring those people to you and grateful. So again, thank you for all you've done. I love you each and one of you. God bless. And we'll talk to you after Thanksgiving. Bye-bye for now.